Hey, what's up, guys? This is Alex, and today I want to talk about two new libraries which I got late, uh, recently. One is Ava Instinct, which is a sound effects trailer effects library, and the other is Cine Samples Cine String Solo, which is a library for solo strings. Now, actually, I'm gonna make another video about Cine String Solo. In this episode, we're gonna talk about Ava Instinct and what I think about it. So, yeah, I've wrote this right that you see here to test those two libraries. So, um, yeah, we're gonna listen to it first, and then I'm gonna talk to you about Ava Instinct and what I think about it. So, playing in three, two, one. So that was the track that I wrote, and for those of you with a good video gaming culture, you know, this is a Final Fantasy VIII track that I re I've rewritten in a super epic orchestral style. So, uh, well, what you heard here, the solo strings were from Cine Samples, Cine Strings Solo, and all the trailer effects, like the trailer hits, the risers, the brams, and the loops, and stuff like that, all of that was from... Ava Instinct. Now, Ava Instinct is, as I said, a trailer effects library. And by the way, this track is not completely finished uh, in terms of mixing and mastering. So, uh, yeah, it sounds okay, but there are some, some things I need to tweak. But anyway, um, Ava Instinct, let's talk about it. Now, it's a library made of samples and uh, it also comes with a graphical user interface, but I only use the WAV samples in this case uh, without using the interface. And you get this type of sound, so ramps, downers, drones, hits, loops, risers, sub-hits, and wishes. I kind of use the uh, sounds from all the categories um, in the track, and I'm going to tell you now, we're going to analyze the trailer side of things in this track, and I'm going to tell you how I use those and why they're awesome. But the first thing I need to say is that this library, uh, as you can see here, each folder has like 10 to 20 samples. Uh, at most, mostly like 10 samples. So it's not one of those libraries where they um, decided to focus on quantity instead of quality. What I did here is quality instead of quantity. So they don't promise like, hey, buy this library and you'll get 5,000 samples, five gigabytes. No, they give you a very um, small package, but every sample in this library is good compared to the, the other libraries where you get 5,000 samples and only like 100 are good. So. Uh, they didn't try to trick you with that gimmick that I see around that often, so, so often. So good job, Ava Music Group, for that. Now, this is, I think, is the first library they released. And um, yeah, in my opinion, it's one, like, after I tried it, it became one of my top three, uh, top three trailer sound effects library, even just because of the names. The Wish It, there's one called Charizard, Elder Scrolls, and other things like this. And uh, yeah, the quality of the sound is insane. Like not only in the whooshes, but even the brams, for example. It's really great stuff. So let's see how I used it in my track. So the first thing that you notice when you listen to this track is the hits. So there is, uh, you know, the percussion is from damage and uh, I added these hits to the percussion.
which for the most part is Ava Instinct. There's only one role, like Taiko role from uh, another library, but uh, these hits here and like all the hits in the track, they are from Ava Instinct. Now, um, what I did here, uh, by the way, if you're, if you're curious about how to write this type of music, this is not, not, it's not something I'm going to explain in this review, but in this channel, there's lots of tutorials about many things about orchestral music and cinematic music in general. So if you listen to this track and you thought, oh my God, I need to learn how to do this. Well, if you check out the rest of this channel, you're going to learn that. And uh, yeah, I also, I also mentioned, um, I also mentioned materials and resources where you can learn about this stuff. So yeah, anyway, um, about the hits. So what I did here is I layered them. So uh, as you can see, I'm not using one single hit. The reason is that if you use one single hit, it's not going to sound as, as big. While it is good, it doesn't sound as big as, as this. So yeah, I pretty much used uh, for the hits for layers. I used the Mega Punch. The Dragon Roll, Tom Trailer, and Charizard, and this sub. So you get with this library with the hits, you get many types of hits. You have the hits which are wishes, like Charizard, or you get hits which are like without that initial whoosh, like the Tom Trailer. And you also get, you know, whoosh without hits like this. Or sub hits. Which I get asked many times, like, hey Alex, how the hell do you create those uh, low impacts in your tracks? Like you can get you can use sub hits, or you can even get a hit like I don't know, Tom Trailer and feed it through a low pass filter, and you're gonna get pretty much the same effect. But these one are uh, these ones are best. Now the thing I like about this library is that each sound here is very pre, pre prepared and layered and processed, so it sounds amazing out of the box. But if you layer them, you're gonna get an even better result. As I mentioned in my layering tutorial, if you do not know what layering is and how it works and why um, it works like that, well, there is a tutorial on this channel called "How to Make Huge Cinematic Impacts with the Layering" or something like that. And the thing I explained there about layering works for every type of sound in nature. So uh, it's very important knowledge to have. Now, let's check out the brands instead. Um, as you saw before, there are some brands that sound quite atmospheric. And others that are instead more impactful. So the way I use them in this track, um, I just use them to layer, I, I, I layer them with the French horn, or, or sorry, with the brass actually. So in the beginning parts of the track, we have the bass trombone that is playing this. Which are just marcato notes playing uh, below the rest of the, of the brass. And um, yeah, marcato and crescendo notes. So I decided to add a synthetic layer to it by doing the same thing with the brand. So in here, this is just simulates a marcato note and this instead simulates a crescendo. So it does something like this. Sort of like the, um, sort of like the bass trombone. And the other thing I did is I tweaked notes uh, at a certain point because the, this is the layer of the bass trombone, right? I layered it with the bass trombone. So in here, I try to follow the same notes the bass trombone is doing. So I tweak the note of the Bram, and in here, I changed it quite a few times. So it sounds like this. And sorry if the sound is delayed, but it's because there's like the mastering chain active. So it gets a bit of delay. But anyway, uh, as, you he as you heard, like it's playing layered with the bass trombone, it's doing the same thing. Sort of. So that creates a more synthetic feel. And I just put it there as a detail. I didn't use the Bram so much in this track, but I think it adds, um, it makes this track sound more hybrid, which is cool. Well, another cool thing are the risers. So uh, I use some of the risers to um, ease the transitions. And if you do not know what I mean by easing the transitions and stuff like that, I made a tutorial about how to make your track sound more intense and more interesting, where I talk about the importance of risers and sounds like that. And it's called how to make your like four ways to make cinematic arrangements more interesting. I, re I recommend you to watch it if you want to write music that sounds 
quite like enticing like this track. So uh, I use risers for transitions, like for example here. Or for example, maybe here. But I also use them. Um, there is one riser called Insomnia, which I used as um, like I used it as a stutter sound to increase the tension slightly, even when I don't have to do transitions. So in here, for example. So it's playing like stuttered um, rhythms and uh, it's doing like a color response with the hits and the percussion. So we have the hits and then the pop, 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 and then hits and then the riser again. And then here they play together. This is something I mentioned in the uh, cinematic arrangements tutorial and the way I created that stutter, you see the riser is, is, is not stuttered, but I use this plugin called Grossbeat, which is an FL Studio native plugin that allows you to draw like automations and curves to create stutter effects and volume automations in your tracks. So in your sounds. So pretty much this is the, the, the riser get risers riser gets um, put into this plugin, which stutters the sound. And um, yeah, I, I think it makes it more rhythmic and less uh, aleatoric and transitory. So I used it, um, you know, beneath the percussion to add that sense of rhythm and stuff like that. And uh, to also increase the tension because, you know, the quality of the risers that the, the pitch increase makes your, um, you know, makes the tension increase. And now the risers of this library, they are so good, so freaking good. For example, um, but some of them are really basic, like this one, basic, like they are normal, like this one. Or this one. But then there's like wicked risers, like this here, the downfall. Listen to it. Like this thing, I, I layered it a little bit, but this is the basic sound. That's bananas. Like it has so many things into it. Like it has, has a hit and there's also like that riser underneath it and then here we have the mm, type of down reverse downer and this is just one sample one sample that you drag into your song and it's gonna sound amazing out of the box because it's super layered and processed already but i decided to add other things to it so i added this this is actually from another library called scenes from the multiverse and this is a downer from ava instinct so together, that's just insane. When you hear it with the percussion and everything else, it's just, oh my God. So yeah, the risers are, are incredible. And um, I only use, like I, all the risers I use here are from Ava Instinct, except for this one, which is a custom and um, yeah, the cool thing I want to talk about though, like the coolest thing that I, or rather the thing I had the most fun with is the loops. Now with this library, other than brands and risers and stuff, and you also have drones, which I haven't used. I'm not, I'm not sure how I, I would use this. Maybe they make more sense when you use the graphical user interface. Uh, I didn't use them in this track. And yeah, the downers, you heard one there, there's others. They're pretty simple though. And um, yeah, what I wanted to tell, you, uh, to tell you about are the loops. Now the loops, there are some that are percussive and others are melodic. Like for example, uh, this one, it's a percussive loop, another percussive loop, and then you also have stuff like this. Now the issue with using loops is that people, when they use them, they tend to drag them and they just leave them as they are. So if I have this renegade loop here and it's playing its own melody, uh, you know, it, it, 
it makes it a bit of um of an, of an obstacle to use it because maybe I have a different melody going on or different rhythms and I do not want this loop exactly like this. So, uh, for example, in this part there are two loops which I used, um, and uh, yeah, there there is that limit that if you're using loops with audio um, in audio form, you cannot tweak them so much, can't you? Actually, I think you can, because it's what I did here. So this is something people tend to overlook. They think, all right, this loop is audio. I cannot do anything with it except use it as it is. And that's completely wrong. You can do so much with loops. So there is one thing, one thing called resampling, and um, you can also apply effects on them. So let's see what I did here. For example, there is this part, which brings about a sort of a breakdown in the track. Um, and uh, yeah, let's play it. So in this part, there is the orchestra doing its own things, like its own, uh, you know, it's playing melodies and like, chords and stuff. Now it's playing its own rhythm and its own harmonies and stuff. That's the reason why I couldn't put the Renegade loop like that and just keep it like that. And uh, yeah, but I still wanted to use it. So what I did is I resampled it. I think that's the term. So what I did I, again, I didn't use the graphical user interface for some reason. So I had to improvise, and I used this plugin called Harmor. It's a play, FL Studio native plugin that you can. Um, it's sort of like a synthesizer resampler. Sampler, like it, it has so many functions. But what I did is I. I think this is something you can do with any type of sampler. By the way. I took this Renegade loop, and since I wanted to play my own melodies with it, I decided to cut like um, a part that plays the same note, and I imported it into Harmor, so that when I play a note with Harmor, it's gonna read the loop and transition it to that note. Oh, my keyboard is not working, but yeah, like this. You see, it loops, and. Uh, this gave me the freedom to write my own melodies with it. So I did that, and I actually created two versions of this loop. One is a, a little bit lower, and the other is a bit more high. So I have this Renegade loop, and now I play this melody with it. So um, this gives you the freedom to play samples. Now, if you go too low, the, the resampling is going to have a, like, it's going to strain. See, you hear the strain. It's not. It's not so clear anymore. So you have to stay around, the, you know, the main range of of um, octaves. If you go too high, it's gonna sound weird. If you go too low, it's gonna sound weird. But if you play around here, you play around here. It's it's uh it's okay. So um, I had the freedom now to play with my own melodies and stuff. So I did that, and I added um some filters here, which are being like automated. So as this goes on, you're going to notice the second voice, like the higher uh, arpeggio coming on. And in here, it's really evident because it's playing at such a high octave. So uh, the thing here, the thing that I'm doing here, uh, where I'm alternating the note, Again, I'm doing this with the Renegade loop. I'm doing this with only this wave file. And uh, I'm also using uh, the legato function of Harmor. So when I change note, it doesn't like re-trigger the loop. It just you know, shifts to the note to get that sort of, um, you know, playing style. So yeah, we have this thing going on, and uh, that's one way in which I use the loops. I resample them, so this is cool. And I like it because it gives that bass foundation for this part and gives that sense of rhythm. Like, uh, in here we have a break, the percussion kind of go away, but this arpeggio, it's playing a certain rhythm, still, it still keeps the rhythm and the energy a bit alive. But apart that, I also have... Um, I've done a few things other than that. So I also have this loop, the Ken percussion, which is this one. 
Again though, I didn't import this loop. Sorry. I didn't import this loop and left it as it is because again, the orchestration is playing its own rhythm and the renegade uh, uh, arpeggio now it's playing another rhythm. I didn't want to use I didn't want to limit myself to use the rhythms that are in this library. So I created new ones by you know, taking this and I just as you can see here, it's cut multiple times to create my own rhythm as I want it to be and stuff like that. So this is what uh, it ended up sounding like. Sounding like. So I played it, I played with it a little bit. And another thing I did is I added some gross beat and um, I used it in the second way in which you can use gross beat. So, so gross beat, you can do volume automation to trigger stutters, but you can also do apply some glitches and things. So notice what happens shortly after this automation is triggered. You could hear like the glitches, it glitches out. So that's, uh, <clears throat> that's one thing I explained in the how to uh, make cinematic arrangements more interesting, um, to ha have variations in, and add uh, the most amount of details possible in your tracks. That helps. Now, this loop, the thing I like about it is that it bounces back and forth between the left and the right, in the right, in terms of panning. But I decided to add that glitch to make things more interesting, and I also made use of it to increase the tension. So in the beginning, it only glitches out a few things, a few, a few times. But once the track starts to evolve and go back to uh, you know, the climax and stuff, you see here the artic the automation is getting triggered way more. So uh, it's as if the sound starts to glitch out way more and starts to go crazy like this. And it's just a stupid detail, but when you hear it with everything else, like it, in its subtlety, it adds that degree of variation and it pre-announces change. That's something I like. And the same thing I did here with the uh, legato thing, it was to pre-announce something is about to change. So when you play it together with everything else, sorry. which sounds way better than if I would have taken this loop and just put it there. First, because maybe it, wasn't, it, it wouldn't have been compatible with the rhythms of everything else. And second, because it wouldn't have been variable. That's the problem with loops. They are not so variable. After a while, like in the beginning, they sound great. But after a while, if you play, for, play them for too long, uh, the listener gets used to the loop and uh, it doesn't sound, uh, you know, surprising anymore. So it's good to glitch them out and to tweak the, the rhythms and to cut them and rearrange them in such a way to make them sound interesting sometimes. Like you, you still need to have a degree of like does does need to make sense. You cannot just arrange it like randomly and stuff because that's going to be too weird. But if you give it a bit of sense and a bit of surprise as well, like 50-50, that's uh, going to be the best thing. So, you know, I did what I did here is adding glitches and you know, editing the rhythm. Another thing I did is I created this sort of sort of like um, sub impact loop by taking this sub impact and I already did something like this in my track uh, the landing so this this is the raw sound. Then I just put some. Uh, EQ maybe? Yeah, I EQ'd it a little bit and I put some delay to get those echoes that make the thing sound more atmospheric. So yeah, all this together, the loops and the renegade, etc. Let's see what they sound like alone, actually. Yeah, this is just, it's not the foundation of this part. The foundation of this part is actually the orchestra, but because it's playing like a very important melody, which repeats itself in the climax. But this is just a degree of detail that I added underneath the orchestra. And I did that with Ava Instinct, like all of this that you heard is Ava Instinct, uh, the uh, loops and stuff. And that really helped into making this break more interesting. So, yeah. And um, yeah, that's pretty much... Um, it about these libraries that 
Like you get so many sounds, even if there are few, the quality of them is so good. So you can use them very easily and make your tracks sound impressive because of the, the quality of the sounds that you use in it. And you can do, as you saw, many things with them. And there's things that I didn't do, like using drones and stuff. So um, there's way more possibilities than maybe it looks like. But the coolest thing about this library is that I think it costs like $99. I think that's the price I saw on the site, which is like an insane price for this degree of quality. And uh, like, I think it's, it's one of, it's my, it's in my top three of uh, trader libraries because of the price, but also because of the quality. I think I'm going to be using this quite a lot. The, um, the thing I need to try is the graphical user interface, but for what I tried in this track, like 99 bucks is totally worth it for this library, especially for, again, the degree of processing on their samples, like this downfall thing, it's just... So good. And yeah, and they also have a sample called Charizard. I, I know I mentioned that, but I need to mention it again because that, that shows how awesome they are as, as a company if they call a sample Charizard. So yeah, that's it for this review. I'm going to make another review for Cinematic Strings Solo. Sorry, Cine Strings Solo, which are the strings that you heard here, like um, these guys here. And uh, the rest is actually like Metropolis Arc and all the libraries I use. Usually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a comment where I write all the libraries I use. But most of the trader sound effects, the trader sound effects are from Ava and the solo strings are from Cine String Solo. So yeah, I'm going to make a review about that maybe next week. Um, I think I'll be moving on Monday. So there might be a bit of delay between this review and that other one. But yeah, if you have questions, let me know. But if you were interested in Ava, Ava Instinct, I think you can go on their SoundCloud of Ava Music Group and uh, there might be some demos that you, you can listen to and check it out. And uh, yeah, I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video or where to find the library and where to find them. And also, if you want to, again, learn how to write this type of music, this channel is super packed of tutorials, which I've been working for this whole year on how to make tracks to sound like, like how to make tracks that sound like this, how to make your orchestral music sound professional and stuff like that. And if you want to learn more, even more, there's some courses which I always mention, which are the Evanon courses that take you from zero to hero, really. And uh, they're a bit of an investment, but if you're interested in learning fast, if you want to take that shortcut to professional sounding music, other than watching these tutorials, taking private lessons from me and stuff like that, those courses are insane. And um, the, the link to those courses, if you want to check them out, are in the description of this video. So yeah, uh, if you have any questions, though, let me know. If I forgot to mention something, maybe I forgot and you want to know, just ask me and I'll, I'll, I'll answer them. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. 